Hi, everybody. Welcome to our interview and podcast. We've got Robin Parr with us today. I am ridiculously excited. Um, she has been on the Theta Healing journey. She is a spiritual entrepreneur. Now she's a medical intuitive as well. Um, she's into Bikram yoga, which is one of my favorite things of all time. But one of the best things about working with Robin for the last six months is that she's always so full of courage. She's always surprising me um, with one good thing after the other. And she's got not just a wicked sense of humor, but an intelligence that's going to like shake you guys to the core. So I'm absolutely delighted to be working with her. I'm so happy she's here. I'm going to let her introduce herself to you and tell you a little bit more about what she does. And then we're just going to flow, guys. Welcome, Robin. Thank you. So um, I'm super excited to be talking to you today. To you today. Um, my name is Robin Parr. I'm an American. I've lived in Amsterdam for about 20 years. I am a spiritual teacher, healer. I've been running my own um, company for, I don't know, four or five years very successfully. And um, before that, I taught full-time Bikram Yoga. And um, when I came up to you like six months ago and we had a call, I was basically like, I just want a deeper connection to God. I don't really, you know, I don't really need to go into like hospitals and do all this medical, and <laughs> medical stuff, you know, that's just not the thing that I really care about, but I just want to talk to God. Yeah. And in that 20 minute conversation we had, um, my life changed. Uh, I'm just going uh, to try not to cry. <laughs> I'm going to cry too. Um, it, um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's all the feels <laughs> that sentence is a bitch guys sometimes you just you really feel what you feel when you feel it oh my gosh so we worked on trusting myself in that little conversation and it hit hard and after that conversation, I had so much confidence and so much trust in myself that I exploded. You know, my com my business just went like, wow, my claircognizance opened up. And um, I was having these months of bliss. Like I'd wake up at five in the morning before my boyfriend's alarm and I'd be like, what <laughs> like what's gonna happen today life is amazing and I would just turn my focus on like a client I couldn't help I worked with this little boy in Barcelona I went there to work with him like a year ago I couldn't help him in the way I knew I could help and I was sitting there one morning in bed and I just thought of him and it was like bam I knew exactly what had happened to him and I called his mom and she said I just thought of you yesterday and a friend sent a video about this and this and oh my gosh, thank you so much. I totally, in all cells of my body, I, I hear what you're saying and I know this is what we need to do for him. And it was like ongoing like that. Everyone I talked to, I would get this knowing of they need this homeopathic remedy or this is the thing that they haven't been able to get diagnosed and this is what's actually happening to them. And so every conversation I had with people was basically like, you need to work with me. You know, like, like I get when you said, you're the answer to our prayers like I got it in every cell that I am the answer to their prayers and if they don't work with me their life might they might not have this amazingness that I know is possible for them so needless to say um financially like I got booked out you know four months in advance where I I couldn't post I mean I, we were supposed I to be messaging me going, what do I do <laughs> yeah yeah we were supposed to be posting daily but if I post something and it's still the case, I will get a package sale or I will get someone who wants sessions. And I was booked for four months out. So, and I wanted my one-on-one -on -one people to have, you know, their spaces. So it was the best problem, you know, a healer could have. Um, and not only that, but I was leading a group course at the time and the results that those clients had were crazy. Like I had one woman who said, I really want to join your course, but I can't afford it. Can we pay like a hundred a month? And I was like, absolutely. So she joined 
And within that month, she went from like not enough money to 12,000 euros she made in that next month with her spiritual business that she just went, again, she exploded. And um, other people in that same course, they moved countries to their dream house. They, they quantum jumped into creating the reality that they hadn't thought was possible. We were all just like, whoa, what's going on here? <laughs> like, you know, you sit back and you don't do anything. You're just being yourself and people are having their lives change miraculously. And you're just going like, this is funny. God, it's really? Funny. You know, <laughs> really? Yeah, so um, that was like on a big scale, like what was happening with my business. But something that happened that was so, um, so touching, because I know probably there's a lot of mothers out here who, once you start doing your healing, you start thinking, I really don't want my child to be screwed up like I was. But you know, they're traumatized because whatever, you left them with the neighbor or you did this or something always happens because we're humans. And when my kid was four, I, my husband and I took him to a Halloween party and he couldn't talk to the adults. Like they said, you're in, you're locked in. Basically you have to stay and the music was too loud. But he was too young to be there alone and say like, I don't wanna be here. Anyway, I knew it was a traumatic experience for him but I couldn't undo it for, you know, he's 11 now. I couldn't figure out how to undo this. And in your exercise, so in the course, this one exercise where you taught about releasing emotions, like the most simple, the most simple exercise. I stood and I said, hey, I was releasing this emotion and I figured you might have the same because you're my child. And he was like, okay. So we did it together. And we're doing this exercise. We're just moving, you know, in the, yeah. in the spiral. And, and the tears start coming and they start coming for him. <laughs> it's gonna go again. <laughs> It's a and, powerful morning, Robin. <laughs> this, you know, this 11-year-old was finally able to process that. And then we were like, well, let's go to the next one. You know, in this time, he got lost on his bike in Amsterdam alone. And then all that panic that came up and all that, whoop, you know, we're doing the spirals and he's bawling, crying. But it was like, like... As a mother, the simplest ability to be able to help your child process their big emotions without feeling like you traumatize them and need to send them off to, you know, a therapist or a healer as soon as possible. That was so, so, so valuable of the course. But of course, that meant I can work with any kids just simply. I would have his friends spend the night and then we'd say, hey, is there anything, you know, and then his friends would just they would just want to, you know, <laughs> release yeah. some emotions, something so simple. So I'm, I'm definitely one of those students who is mourning the end of this. Um, for me to receive it, like I've been working for many years as a healer, you know. I do. You're very, you were a very established teacher before you came on. And the thing as a healer is that you don't get lessons in healing. You go to your own healings and you learn along the way. But every week I would get all of your information of like how to how to do a scan, how to do this, how to how to heal, how to guide a session, how to work with trauma. And to be able to have someone meet me at a level and I get to grow again, you know, and I get to learn new things and and in the practice groups really feel like I fumbled and failed and I sucked at something again, which was like, <laughs> ooh, you know, I have to learn something new was is like the best gift as an adult to be able to expand my abilities and to feel like I'm getting better in my in my expertise oh this is such a gift I like so many things you said are just um they're so goddamn beautiful Robin they're so beautiful and I really want to honor who you are because it's how you use things you know it's how you show up for things and you have shown up if you've shown up with so much love not just for yourself but for the other students as well I've seen you mm. go above and beyond over and over and over again and it's it's what you're like I, I work so hard with these containers um because it's, it's exactly what you said I um I felt so lonely after becoming a teacher, especially for like five, 10 years. And I also felt like 
I didn't want any weird competition energy in those spaces. And I also wanted a space where we get to fail because I find so many modalities are just like, it covers it up, but then there's no space for you to really see how far you can go, see how great you can be, see how, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's so hard because you just sitting on your hands and letting people fail. It's exactly like with your children, you know, when they fall over and you're like, ah, you know, and you know, they can do it, but it's still like, you, 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 you know what we're like, we, you, you've seen how many times the emotions really like touch your core and it's so hard and it's so, um, it's so right at the same time, because watching you do what you're able to do has been the greatest thing. Like the witnessing of that has been not just so much growth, but so much joy. Mm. Um, it, it's, it's quite um, incredible. How, like what um what a piece it brings it sounds crazy right but one of the reasons I, I did medical intuitive was exactly because when my son was being born I thought if anything happens to me right then there's a lot of people that don't get that information yeah there's a lot of people in this in this queue that are like you said are, will perish are not going to be here anymore and that's not right it's not mine it's it's humanity's right um and when I watch you and, and the others do their thing, that is gone. You know, that burden is gone. That, like that's, it's, it's it, like, it's almost like it's so, it's so beautiful. It's, and it's such a relief. Do you ever get that feeling where it's like, I, cause you have seen your containers and the same thing with wealth. Like it's such a big prison and health can be the same. And when you watch people come out of it, it's like a, oh, cause they're part <laughs> of your soul family. You know, you're like, oh, yeah. they're, they're out, they're free, they're strong. They can do this right yeah and what for me what I also was commenting on a, a few friends that uh, we got to see the hot seat healings like uh, weekly almost yeah. and it's like there's such a privilege because again when do you ever get to be a fly in the wall in someone's healing session yeah and then to see what's possible so it was masterful you know it's like watching an Olympian do their work and being able to see how they practice basically and see the way they're training in order to to know what steps do i need to work on what do i need to develop myself where do i feel shaky still when i would watch her healings i would just notice like oh i didn't know anything about this area let me focus on that some more or um oh this guy's really not doing this and this what what if I lead back a little bit in my sessions could I you know apply that as well to my sessions so it was like it was like ah, the as a healer the greatest thing to be able to learn and watch and enjoy and you know it's like watching an Olympian do a sport it's masterful it's amazing like I love the hot seat healings the hot seat healings are like what you it's so okay so like complete vulnerability like so for real the first time I had to do a hot seat healing in my own modality I I almost died <laughs> I did I really really did um <laughs> no pressure right no pressure no pressure um and it's it's so but I, this is the thing about teaching right is that in teaching you become better at uh, what you do as well mm -hmm. it's having to explain it than the questions you actually have to think about why did it why did I move like that why did it why did it flow like that um but I hear you because I actually miss that so much I miss watching demonstrations it's still one of the things I binge watch online is other people's <laughs> demonstrations um, but I hear you and the, I think it is so ridiculously important. Um, I think it's so ridiculously important because I, so what you said, I think every, when you do it in a room where all the other healers are doing it, everybody goes kadunk, kadunk. And the same yeah. thing happens online, but it is different because you can't see everyone else. You know, there is something <laughs> about how we process with the third eye and, and the, and the energy of it that I, um, I, it's very important to have that. Um, it's very important to have that. And I will be inviting you guys to do hot seats, just so you know, um, not just like receive, actually give them so that people can see, you know, because everybody's different in how they move when God is moving with them. Yeah. And some people just get sparked, you know, exactly by what you saw. That resonance is so powerful and, and so deep. Um, well, speaking but, of that, because yep. um, 
we had to do two case studies in order to complete the MIT. Mm -hmm. And so it was the first time in, you know, I used to record my Zoom sessions, but most of the time people are having packages. They don't need the recordings. Yeah. So this was the first time where I was doing the medical intuitive technique recorded. And when I went back and watched part of it, it was like, like what you said, like, wow, you know, I, I had a totally different, um, how do you call that? Recognition of myself. Like I would go, oh, I get why people feel safe with me. Or I get why um, people want to keep coming back for sessions with me. And yeah. I could I could acknowledge myself and really be uh, like, great. You know, like you have such an amazing energy, Robin. Wow, that's amazing. Like, and look back on it and just laugh. Like it was fun, you know, and like yeah. something I would have never had the opportunity to see, sense or know about myself because I would have never done a third person you know look at what was actually happening there I think that's one of the reasons that God kind of pushed me because I had so much training when I did counseling and hypnosis and and um um because I, I ended up doing an advanced diploma in, in in counseling and um and the hypnosis was the first year but it was it was like one of those divine interventions because I would never have studied hypnosis otherwise I just wouldn't have done it and then mm -hmm. I got sucked in and I fell in love the same way you kind of fell in love with this but there was something so powerful about the supervision about like I said being able to ask questions and also about the like I remember particularly Anthony Robbins um saying record your sessions listen to your phone calls what language are you using and you know watch it back and in the beginning it was so um it's so hard for most people to do, right? Because they're hardwired not to witness themselves. Yeah. But that wound, that block to your own validation stops so much manifestation, so much recognition, so much growth and fame. Because obviously, if you can't validate yourself, then the world can't recognize and validate you, right? And yeah. clients are looking for results. So unless you can really speak to the certainty that you can contain, that you can help, that you can nurture, they don't feel safe with you. Yeah. So when you're able to do that, suddenly you can, and you're like, no, I get that I am unique. I get that I'm different. And it's not an arrogant thing. It is a humility thing. It's you are actually able to witness yourself for the first time. And that's huge. Yeah. You know, I think it's hard for most people, particularly from a lot of modalities where they don't have to do anything like that. But I think the growth is exponential if you're willing to be present with yourself and the way you move and the way you dance and the way that, you know, God moves through you. I think it completely changes you from take, treating your spiritual gifts and the promises God put inside you like toys to taking them seriously and understanding that they are life saving tools. And that's what I feel when I watch you, you know. Well, this is the thing that came up with the whole course was I thought everyone was like me. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, uh, no so during the course I was like oh these things that come really natural to really naturally to me like creating a successful business as a healer or uh, working on my wealth consciousness the things that I adore and the things that I'm really good at like call me at one in the morning and we'll chat you know, business and manifestation, baby, you know, like those things I thought were just given. And then to be in this container with so many different healers struggling with exactly that, I thought, oh, oh, let me, <laughs> let me focus on that a little bit more, you know, like, let me call it out in my marketing. Let me talk about it in my copy. Um, it's huge. It, the wound is massive and it's lifetimes long. So it's beautiful that you're, that you, that you moved into that space. And it's a huge space. Financial abuse is such a huge um, wound for most healers. Yeah. Um, I don't like this. is This is the thing. You. This is the thing about niching down. You can't um, do everything at once. You know. And health is a huge, huge, huge space. So is wealth. It is massive. It is pervasive because you need it for every area of life. You know. But I think a hundred percent. And there's so many incredible healers so many incredible healers who are living on nothing because this is their yeah. so it's very powerful work that you're doing yeah yeah and then of course the the byproduct let's say or whatever was doing the medical intuitive technique i started offering health packages 
and having my first clients booking these health packages. And because my claircognizance opened up, I was getting information about flower essences or homeopathic remedies that would support them. And um, <clears throat> things that I really care, you know, I've always, I, I studied fashion before I thought Bikram Yoga. I've always had this, this love for the human body. So to not just feel kind of clueless, like I used to feel when it would come to healings about the body, but really to know, yeah, I've been working with a client for, I don't know, a year or so with cancer. And then to be able to do the deeper work and the aftercare and the things that before MIT, I just felt kind of like, oh, you know, hope it's yeah. going okay. Hope it's working out, but just got this extra level of confidence and the ability to expand, you know, what I could really offer people that it feels more round. It, I, I think that healing, like particularly if you look at the lives of, of Jesus or, or Buddha or then healing is, is I think one of the fundamental gifts um, that is so intertwined with all the other gifts, which is like, you know, the claircognizance, the gifts of prophecy, yeah. or the desire to purely help, yeah. right? It's such a part of who we are as healers that when it's blocked, the others are like domino <laughs> kind of, they're still there, but they're not the way. Um, and then when you, when it opens suddenly, particularly like with the, with the entrepreneurs and the, it's actually how I got really deeply sucked into medical intuition was because so many of the, the entrepreneurs I was working with in the beginning, and it wasn't, you know, you know, the way God does synchronicity, right? It's because <laughs> I was working with light machines and I was working in Anna's, um, in Anna's theta healing company and behind the scenes. And I was working in Dubai and people would come and say, I heard you're good with the health stuff. And my dad has a hole in his heart. My mom is struggling with this. I'm, and I'd be like, well, that's not really what I do, but I can come and try. And then just the willingness, right, is enough for God to get in there and be like, I'm sorting this out. <laughs> and then, as they said, the love for them means that you start, You not only do you get guided to different things, but you get, um, um, you start to understand that there is an intelligence, not just in the plant kingdoms and the mineral kingdoms and in the DNA that, that this wound was not created even in this life or the lifetimes before, and that it takes time. And that's where the plants can support and the nutrition can support. And the, the it's like it, everyone heals in their own time and their divine timing. It's not our job to force, right? The healing happens in an instant, but then the person's evolution around that and their identity recreating, that's a, a, a an intimate process. Um, so it's, I, I still remember, particularly when I was in Dubai, because there was so many, um, so many healings, like around babies in particular. Um, and I think that's actually what brought my son in, um, because before that I'd had a miscarriage and having to do so many healings on women with like babies and, and miscarriages and things back to back to back to back. Mm -hmm. And I remember it just completely shaking the ground under, underneath my feet. You know, like you said, like that, that energy of, um, the future generations of healers wanting to come through uh -huh. um, and how much, like you said, how much we were afraid or the mother guilt, we were afraid of hurting them or not giving them a good enough life. Um, and how much they were so like, I still remember my son as well, my body, ridiculously brave. They just want to come, <laughs> you know, they're like, get out of my way. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's, um, it's one of those, it's one of those like, insanely beautiful and insanely um um insanely like you said like divine responsibility that level of surrender that a life is a life before you ever touches you yeah you know and that it's got a greater purpose that it's you're just a, a portal it's passing through at one stage <laughs> it's evolution um but it's it's really powerful the way like you said that the way this combines particularly like when you're when you're talking we're talking about abundance and we're talking because we actually have two pregnancies now from this medical intuitive right wow. right did, well, to one came in yesterday and one came in two weeks ago and um they were like oh what do I do about this and can I have more time with homework and I was like yes and yeah <laughs> <laughs> spirit babies get whatever they want um so but it's it's that energy of um like the limitless possibilities, the exponential growth available and the, but particularly with pregnancy and abundance and, and the provision, that's a huge deal. Like you said, yeah. when, you're, when you're working through, I think it's the number one block to fertility when I work on it. Ah, that's, I didn't understand also, same as you were a few months ago, I just started getting 
abortions, miscarriages, want to get pregnant, all these fertility things showing up. And I just said like, okay, God, you know, whatever. Yep. I'm, I'm that person right now that's helping them for whatever reason. But it's, it just has its this, you know, because there's something about that. You just, you're talking to that spirit baby and you have clear ideas, like it's coming or cradle to grave. Yeah. You change the birth or you change the death and the whole life destiny line changes. It's mad. Yeah. It's, 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 I do like, I think this is one of the best things about the clairvoyance is that witnessing that is like witnessing, I don't know. It's like witnessing a rope become, become a star, right? Cause their lifeline mm-hmm. is like a rope. And then suddenly when it's, when it's not bound by the, the karma at the birth and the karma at the death, it just goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so almost full circle you know we're talking in our discovery call six months ago and I said I don't want to do that hospital stuff and and you're like oh don't worry you don't have to go to hospitals and last week I was in the hospital with my friend and um I was like really you know but (laughs) I was like god really and the space that I was able to be um using body processes that I could that I use with my kid or with my clients just being a space, not being triggered by all the things, especially in the course, because we talk about medical traumas, about diagnosis traumas, and just being able to be there without getting triggered, without getting upset, without going into, you know, just being the space for my friend to heal was, I I, I had a good laugh at it. <laughs> I was like, you can't make this stuff up. You cannot, I, I had what I had one, like genuine, like you, like friend, not even, not a client, a friend. And um, the number of times the nurses asked her why she was crying after she'd literally had physical surgery and you're sitting there going, I'm just going to keep sending them unconditional love and put a nice little bubble over here because <laughs> this is like insane. This is like insane. And the, I remember that she said the doctors actually came to her and said, I've never done a surgery like that. I've never had it work so seamlessly like that. Like you must be a special person. (laughs) Um, It's like, yeah, but it's there. It's such a different world. And I think it's so hard. It's, It's so hard because they, and I get this, I think on a genetic level because my dad is a doctor, right? And Mm. I watched him in in two different countries because the health system in Brazil is very different than the health system inside the UK. Right. But this this um, this energy of staying up all night and the the I will do whatever it takes for this person to survive. And this almost like this battle right against the body and against death Uh versus, you know, us, which is like an understanding of what why the soul created this discomfort or this disease and and what it is. what it is learning through that particular experience and working with instead of working against or battling against right yeah it's so hard because like my for example my father has more than 200 people on his waiting list wow right and you're sitting there going you know you can I, I watched when I was a kid I watched him come home tired every day and I didn't get energetically what that meant I didn't mm-hmm. get the pressure right so it, if you're th- them trying to heal on a 3d level is so different and yeah. so much more um, beautiful, but heavy at the same time, you know? Yeah. So it's um, it's a real privilege, like I said, to be able to be there. And it's also insane because hospitals, how how they're not conductive to healing is, a, is an act of, I don't know what, it just doesn't make any sense. You're like, what? So explain your experience as well. What was it like for you? Well, the, oh my gosh, uh, I was just grateful, <laughs> right? I was grateful I had some tools to be in that space. I, I That's when I, a hospital are actually when I started using machines because I was like, there's too much energy in here for me to shift alone. This is not like a human thing and there's too many people. And that's when I started working with AI and ET on an energetic level because I was like, this needs to be cleared on a level that I cannot do on my own without buckling over here. And that's when I was like, instant like metaphysical machine, machine, machine. <laughs> like scan clear remove record I was like a machine in every room please it was just like yeah no we're not doing this we're not going down that rabbit hole we're just going to clear everything and we're going to like leave it plugged in this is this makes sense why 
when I was with this friend, I just kept going, wow, I can really feel this machine, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yep. And my, um, one of my clients, she said, my friend is really psychic. And she said, somebody put a big machine over your bed. It's like huge. It's like a cathedral. And I was like, have you seen the size of the hospital? I'm like, you don't know what I'm up against. You know, it <laughs> needs to like keep clearing no beliefs that are not supposed to be in your body are getting in. And that means it has to be there 24 hours a day. You know, which means like, you know, you know what it's like when you have kids and you have a partner, you can't do that energetically and they yeah. need that energetically. Yeah. So there are consciousnesses available that can offer that to them. That's a huge deal. Amazing. That's so cool. <clears throat> um, so as you look on the, like the whole course, cause now six months have almost gone by. There's a few more Q and A's. Is there anything that you think you wish you could have added or would like to still add or? Oh my gosh. So you guys haven't had it yet, but the diseases list is coming out with the 300 diseases and all the protocols. So that's coming out this week. And um, it was finished two weeks ago, but then all the editing and stuff and uh -huh. it's like, it's coming out this week. I want to add a whole section on plant medicine. I want to add a whole section on, um, um, what's it called? Like the machines that we talked about. So implants and things like that. It needs a section on conspiracy theory. <laughs> right, so people can go deep dive onto the genetic modifications that are happening and onto the without feeling like you know they're going to be uh persecuted. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's a list, there's a whole trauma and somatic uh, module thing that we're we're already because I, I went to the little trauma module that I gave you guys, I was sitting channeling, and you know what it's like with the Clark Cognizance. So I'm sitting there thinking, I'm going to do like two hours of like a workshop, maybe an hour, and then it will be done. Oh, no, no, 30 modules came through. And then I was speaking to one of my assistants and I was like, yeah, I'm just going to record this the day and tomorrow. And she's like, that's a whole course. She's like, can't you like condense it? And then for next round, like, 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 like your fierce, we'll just make a, like a whole trauma, like a proper trauma <clears throat> aware scenario. But it, it, like, there's so much because health is such a huge area. Um, and even the, the niches, which is why there's the, the fierce fertility and, and the guts and things like that. There's, you know, it's so huge. It's so huge. And the more your clairvoyance opens up, but it's so interesting as well. Mm -hmm. um, but we also want to add studies. So obviously they're going to have to be self-funded, which is what we've started doing in the background, like proper double blind studies with the case studies and the, and the results too, so that we can start replicating um, the results and start, you know, getting deeper into hospitals. But like you said, it is genuinely happening anyway. Um, <clears throat> But there is loads, loads I'd like to add and a lot more support as well, because this is because it's a brand new modality. Um, the first round was was just me and the first round of students. Now we have a few more after the second round, first round and now the second round that I'm going to be able to pull in even more people. Um, but insurance wise, you can't bring in people that don't know the modality to support people learning the modality. So it was yeah. a very, um, it was a very high pressure in the beginning, mm -hmm. you know, um, and I genuinely, despite hiring companies, both to help with the teamwork and to help with the structuring of the course, because they're used to like business and abundance coaching, they can just pull in whoever they want, whenever they want, which is very different than what we were allowed to do. So that was a, a very mm -hmm. sharp, sharp learning curve as well. And the hospitals, like we really want to, we really want to add in the psychic surgery and we're in negotiation right now with an insurance company because our one won't let us do it to let us add it. And then the aftercare, like what you said, because there's very powerful pain control um, hypnosis and meditations and um, surgery recovery and um, that I would like to to put in for you guys but I think like I also think the length of the course will have to be changed when I add all that stuff in because there's no way it was already too much for most people in, in six months and you guys really pull me like you really stretch me and I really want to meet you so I, I literally like go all in every single time I'm like I'm not creating anything more and every single time I end up adding loads more um, uh -huh but yes there's there's loads um that we that i think is important to put in um especially pharmaceutical drugs as well because i think so many um so many people aren't aware of the deficiencies that they cause and mm -hmm. that can that actually so much of the illnesses on earth at the moment are secondary nutritional deficiencies because of the drugs people have been exposed to a year ago or two years ago and they don't even know it uh -huh. um so there yeah you asked like one of those questions <laughs> Yeah, there's but a little more. When you talk, like the, the thing that pops up is that meme. I think you either posted it somewhere of 
you know, like the world exploding and everything burning down. And he just asked, do you guys need more vitamins? Do you guys need more minerals? <laughs> and this is a, something that was so reassuring in the course too, is that simple things like scanning for vitamins and minerals, which is for me quite simple, you know, we had to go in and feel some vitamins and minerals in the shop and then you feel it and then you can scan and help so many people with such simple things. You know, also- It's huge, it's mad, it's huge difference. Stops deformities, stops um, mental health conditions, stops all like in, prevention is the best cure. <laughs> I just, something just popped up, just maybe one last thing. Uh, we might be completing in a second, time. but- I was talking to my dad a few months ago during the course and yeah, I've lived with my dad for 44 years. And I said, dad, I know why you're, but I know why you're depressed. <laughs> I said, it's heavy metal poisoning and it's due to the water. And I said, someone else worked with metals. He said, oh, my grandfather was a blacksmith. I said, but your whole family's depressed because of the lead that was in the well in your, you know, and it was like, when you can basically heal yourself from your genetics, from what opened up in this course and to know how to do, this is something I've dealt with my whole life, obviously. And um, yeah, giving him hope, like, you know, for the first time, cause he's been getting electroshock therapy on his brain for like 10 years to try to change the depression and I said it's not about getting more electricity <laughs> <laughs> welcome to my world it's about clearing the stuff out that's causing the neurotransmitters not to be able to fire so it was massive and then you know after doing so much healing like we go deep in this course right I've done so much healing on the relationship with my father and I um for the first time in like 10 years, I went and visited him in Israel. He went to go walk Jesus's path. And I said, well, we can come and visit. So my son got to meet my dad for the first time. Wow. No, I'm not going to try. <laughs> and uh, keep the tears away. And, um, and this is huge. I asked him for money. Like, dad, can you pay for our flights? Which in my world, I've never, you'd never ask dad for money, right? He's not yeah. going to give it to you. But it was like, for the first time he was able to contribute to me and realize like I can see my daughter and my grandson just by this you know it was like it was so so healing and a month or two ago we, we met hung out with Jesus <laughs> had a had a dinner together in Israel it was amazing and and this feeling like my dad who whether he's going to shift this or not in a different way through, you know, detoxing and all this, but he, he went right away. He listened to me for the first time in, in my life. He listened to <laughs> me, he bought like a heavy metal detox, you know, he started eating cilantro, all these things, which, yeah, what a blessing. So thank you for creating this modality. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah. I hear you. I think I genuinely kid, you know, I think I'm still, um, I'm still in shock that it exists. I'm still a bit numb. Um, <laughs> that it is working, not just like that, because I know how much it transforms people's lives, but you know, dissociation's a bitch. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Um, but I, it's, it, it, it is, um, it is my deepest pleasure to be able to help. And, um, you know, my story in the sense of, I started with, um, I started with illness. So I know what it's like to lose people and, um, and myself to things that are completely preventable. What you said, which I thought was incredible, is like some things that humanity does in the name of health are just insane when they're like, yeah, let me just, I saw this poster the other day for like, um, I'm feeling depressed, um, call the doctor and we'll cut out your temporal lobe. It's no. Insane. I kid you not. It's an in and out procedure. You can come in in the morning and go out in the afternoon. And I was sitting there going, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nope, nope, nope. There's just so many things that when you when you're not able to um um tap into the body, there's like like you said, with the electricity is not gonna fix um a lot of things. And um it's a bit mad, especially like especially with um 
with drugs and different substances because I'm all for um, drugs when it's an emergency or when it's for something that you know is needs to be dealt with immediately like a high-end infection or things like that but there are absolutely no studies no proof that we understand what is going on inside the brain and that these substances will 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 help or alter um so like you said when you clear up that stuff around corruption in the collective consciousness people can hear you because that battle is no longer going on it's just the truth is coming through right? You're not trying to convince them. You're just, it's just ridiculous. You're just sitting there going, they just, they just said, what? (laughs) Like, what? You want me to do what? (laughs) You know? Um, It's just mad. I had one little boy and um, he had um, um, very, very bad um, uh, colitis. And I kid you not, before they'd even changed the kid's diet, they wanted to cut out his bowel. Right? Like his bowel, he was like, have a poop bag for the rest of his life, but before even trying a change in diet. So if you get to that point where the truth is just clear and you're not arguing and you're not, and you're just like, okay, I hear that you really want to help and I hear that you get him, but what, what if we just, what if we just, <laughs> what if we don't electrocute anybody's brain? What if we don't cut out any organs? Right? And what if we just change the diet? They're like, that's radical. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> It's like, what? But it's, it's the power of conditioning, right? That the, the most sane thing, which is like, can we eat some green things becomes radical. And the most normal thing becomes, you know, let's cut out this part of your foot or your bowel or your leg. And you're like, yeah, let's, let's try the greens first. And then we can, if it doesn't work, right, we can, we can talk about this later. Um, but it's mad how upside down it's become. Yeah um okay let me tell me about your program because like you said it's getting incredible results and I've seen you shift I think you went from around 5,000 10,000 packages to almost 25,000 for your packages so tell me what you cleared to kind of um moved in that direction because I know they're going to go mad wanting to find out okay so um well, I mean, the stuff that I shifted in order to change prices and to offer stuff like this is self-trust. Um, and um, I really talk to the consciousness of the package I offer. So when I started asking God, like, what do you want me to offer here? I got um, the Healthy Radiant You package and the Intuition Unleashed package. And when I, you know, for me, it was really clear um, my greatest wishes in this life have been to be able to talk to God. And so I know what it's like. And I obviously have clients who are like, I want to have intuition. I want to be able to hear God. I want to be able to hear and use my clairvoyance and all the senses. And I know what it's like to feel disconnected from God. So my greatest wish for people is to be able to connect to God. And, um, so that heals everything else. It does. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, then your finances change, then your health changes, then your happiness changes, everything. You don't have to tell me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but the, this, this is the thing. It's like, it's like, the, what was, what do they call it in my, in, in like more my circles? They call it the curse of knowledge is that it's exactly what we said. You can forget when you are where you are, that there are so many people who, you know, they're asking the, the, um, they're asking those questions and they don't, they don't think like said, the simple things work. And I love that, like your answer is, it was, is exactly mine. Exactly mine. I think the only other thing that I shifted was around um, um, knowing that I matter. So that belief that you uh, don't yeah. matter, that causes some weird nihilistic, depressing clouds that really stop people having like the motivation or the energy. And I think it's the root of all self-sabotage right because if deep down you're like I give up and I don't really matter because I couldn't get mom's love or dad's love then it you know you go like at full speed in your business for three months and then suddenly when things get hard you're like well I'll never be able to do it I'll never be able to get God's love so it doesn't matter and you and you sabotage everything from the inside um but I'm gonna say also that um like I've gone I've had this six-month package where I would go with a client and went to like uh what's the place not Lanzarote, but somewhere, uh, Tenerife, Mm -hmm. and then spend a weekend having a VIP weekend with a client. And then in medical intuition, it was like 
clear for me that I could raise, you know, go from 12,000 package to a 20,000 euro package because of that same idea. Like I matter and my, my time and energy matters. Matter. Being around me will change your life. Um, I started realizing that I am a wealth of knowledge and not everyone is. So when I'm around somebody, they will learn from me all the time. They will shift. They will feel different. Um, I, it was more like I got, I'm a gift at a really deep level. Yep. It's so, crazy. It's because you stop trying to get it from people. It just re re emanates from inside yeah, you. It yeah. doesn't have, it just, it's just there. And for me, it was, it, like I said, it's quite different because I, I actually got, and said, you move the way God tells you to move. I got different guidance. I thought I'd be doing one-to-ones for the rest of my life. And if you'd asked me back when I was doing theta, I was like, I don't really want any of the limelight. I'll do the teaching thing, but I really want to do one-to-ones because that was where, like you said, you really get to hone your craft. And that's where the, it's like, that for me was like breathing air. I just wanted to do session after session after session. And it manifested so quickly for me because I think nobody else really wanted to do it at that point in time. Yeah. And they were like, that's where I burn out. And I was like, nope, that's where I'm happy. Like I'm like a part of my like, pig and shit back here. Just want to stay here forever. <laughs> um, and it was when it was the beginning of uh, beginning of the, um, the COVID thing that God was like, no, I want you working with large groups. And I remember thinking, I just want to stay with with packages. And I'm working was like, no, it's time to, to like to shift into groups. And it was the same belief that you um, that you matter, that the gifts are really important, that they need to be multiplied and they need to be multiplied in that in that collective consciousness um, and that they can't magnify and grow and bear fruit um, the way they need to just in your own energy. You know, they need rich, fertile minds and hearts to grow in. Um, but yeah, it's... Um, it was very different because you, it's it's interesting to see what the path would have been if it had been different, but it's exactly the same. It's that energy of there. It's exponential growth and you get how much um, you matter, but not from um, a lip service way. It's just in your heart that it's the truth. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think that's the difference between doing the healing work and not doing the healing work is that when you're not really doing the inner work, it's like you're faking it. You have to force it. But when it, you're actually shifted in here, it, the life moves around you because your vibration is just different, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then when you're sold out for four months in the future, you you basically have to offer group stuff because there's still so many people that you're going to, that want what you have to offer. So that's oh, just yeah. part of it. And it got really stressful as well, because like, when, especially with health, when people would, especially for emergency health stuff, I didn't know where I was going to put them in. I was like, you know, because health can be like long term, but health can also be I've got stage five. I need a session like tomorrow. I won't be here in a month. Exactly. And, and they're going, right. Um, how am I going to do this? And it also causes the like you said, the calling in of more people because you're you're an, you're an overflow. Yeah. Right. Suddenly you need the support to support. And it, it's such a beautiful it's funny, isn't it? Because the first stage is like the flowering and then the flowering is followed by the fruit. And that, that, that's what I feel like you're, we're kind of in is that fruitfulness energy where everything like is all the flowers are popping and becoming. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like really surprised because like, I thought I was a flower and it's like, yeah, but now you're a fruit. <laughs> you know, it's quite, it's, it's, it's just God's way, isn't it? It's like surprising you um, when you're like, I thought the flower was the most beautiful thing. And it's like, yeah, no, I made this thing for you to eat, you know, but like, yeah for everybody else too and you're like okay that's pretty awesome I thought we were yeah. like done with the flower <laughs> <laughs> okay is there anything else my darling that you would like to talk about or are you happy anything else you feel guided to tell everybody not just about you but in general any messages that you feel because you know this is going to be up for a while so where in your heart if there is now is your chance um so so what I notice, especially because I deal with a lot with healers and healers who are struggling to make enough money to stop their business or stop their work so they can actually do their craft and follow their divine life purpose. Um, I'd say the answer is to work on yourself and to especially work on anything that's blocking you from your confidence, your self-trust, um, believing you're worthy of having all the goods 
the thing I want so much in the world is that people have all the goods that this earth has for them. And um, it's some, you know, we're all born different with different triggers and blocks and wounds. And, and it's like, take your stuff seriously, you know, do whatever it takes. Like this course is amazing because it put us in a street where on that street to get from here to here, you did the work. Yeah. And I'm already the kind of person that has done a lot of work and love this work, but I love that we got to do more work. So when you put, take yourself seriously and take your blocks and say, I want to work on that. I want to shift that up because the world needs more people to show up so they can get the goods. It's alignment. It's such a deep, it's such, it's alignment. It's worthiness is an inherent part of, of divine work. You know, I think that when you've done the work, I don't think there's anybody graduating, having done all this work that goes right. And that's why I find it so amazing because so many of the modalities that, that don't have that, I find that people graduate, but they never practice mm. because deep down they feel like they don't understand it enough or they haven't mm. cleared enough with it to feel comfortable or an in integrity guiding other people through the process. I think because we work so hard, right? By the time you finish, you're like, no, I do know what I'm doing. No, I can't help yeah. somebody. No, if you put me in a sticky situation, I had to get out of this sticky situation, that sticky situation, that difficult. That's why I do know what I'm doing. Um, and no one can take that away. You know, that's yeah. yours. Your your ability to rise is yours. You know, your ability to, um, and that only comes from being put in difficult situations and having to to um, to um sort of problem solve, you know, to heal. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh. You created a Bikram yoga class in a, in a <laughs> healing modality. I love it. I love it. I don't care what anybody says. It's the best thing ever. Um, I, I know it's not even trendy or, but it just is. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> I just, I, th- I think that like that yogi was an absolute genius. The way he put it together, the way your body's like energetically clear, clear afterwards. I'm like, yeah, say what you like. It works. <laughs> Okay. Thank you so much, Robin. It has been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Um, I'm, I would absolutely love to do it again if you're open to it. Guys, all of Robin's incredible details, her um, her group programs, her one-to-one sessions, um, her, her um, Instagram, YouTube, all of that stuff is going to be underneath and we will be updating it as she goes on her journey so you guys can know what she's offering at, at specific different times. And if you're feeling guided to work with her, seriously, like, do not hold back. This is an incredible person um, and with such a huge heart and it's it's a safe space, which is a rare thing, but it's also a real thing and you get to experience that. You get to be held in that way. Thank you so much, Robin. Thank you so much, Sky. Bye for now.